Hey, welcome to the next video in the SAS course. In this video, before we really get started into all the fun stuff, you probably want to know what SAS is. So that's what this video is all about. Now, before we start, I want you to try this. I want you to try something. So grab any CSS from any project of yours, any project lying around. If you have any CSS, I just want you to copy it. And I want you to go to this website, css2sas.herokuapp.com and then paste your CSS and convert it to SAS or SCSS. And that's, that's how easy it is to convert CSS to SAS, old CSS to SAS. Now you won't be doing this all the time, but I just wanted to do this to show you uh, and allow you to notice the difference in, in vanilla CSS and SAS. You can see the difference in the two of them. You can see I have an example here. Uh, we have the vanilla CSS on the left side of the screen and SAS on the right side of the screen. And if you don't know anything about SAS, this might not mean anything to you, but you can see that there's a significant difference in the the size and the characters that that uh, are typed. So you know, there's a bunch of lines of CSS on the left side, and there are it looks like probably three quarters, seventy five percent of it on on the right side in this in SAS, and there are no curly braces, there are no semicolons, and you know the selectors are much simpler because the selectors are nested. And we're going to talk about that all throughout the course. So if that was just a bunch of gibberish to you, that's okay cuz we're going to be uh, we're going to be jumping really far into that stuff. SAS, it stands for syntactically awesome style sheets. The official documentation site for SAS, which is sas-lang.com, explains SAS at, uh, in this way. SAS is the most mature, stable, and powerful professional grade CSS extension language in the world. What does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. But that's okay. If you don't, if this description doesn't entirely help you understand what SAS actually is, that's okay. I'm going to break it down for you uh, as we go through the next little bit of this video. SAS is CSS compatible, which means it's fully compatible with CSS. SAS is a styling language like CSS. It's very, very similar to CSS. As you've seen, if you did that example, you could see it's using similar syntax, but it looks a little bit different. Uh, but it's it's meant to be pre-processed. It's a pre-processor and it's meant to be uh, converted into CSS so the browser can read it. So it's fully CSS compatible. It's feature rich. And so there are other pre-processing languages out there. And I'm going to explain to you what a pre-processor means uh, shortly here. But SAS is, in my, in my opinion, and in many developer and designer, designers' opinions, it's the best uh, because it's so well developed. There's so many features. It's the core uh, SAS team. They're always adding more and keeping things up to date so that they can stay ahead. It's mature, which means it's been, uh, a thing for like nine years or more, uh, and, and that's a good thing because that means it's kind of tried, and, you know, and true and tested. It's industry approved, which simply means that there are so many websites, huge companies, and organizations, and corporations, and developers using SAS as their uh, as their styling language. There's a large community. There are a bunch of people. You know, that includes you and me. Everyone in this course, that includes everyone in the world on the internet using SAS uh, and the people who are building SAS. It's a huge community. So what that means for you is that you can find help on it. If you have a problem with something, if you're confused, you could just Google it and there's going to be an answer to your problem because there are so many people in the SAS community. Frameworks is another huge part. And we're going to really be touching on frameworks in this course. Basically, what this means is there are a third party companies and groups of people who build frameworks on top of SAS so that they make SAS even easier to use or even better or more robust. Think think bootstrap. You know, you have your HTML and CSS, your front end development uh, workflow, but then if you add in bootstrap, that's the framework. And that makes coding and, and mocking up things and, and programming stuff easier because they have a framework and you just have access to a library of features and and uh, you know things that you can use to make uh, developing with this language even easier. So there are a ton of frameworks, uh, a number of them we're going to be talking about in this course, and I'm really going to dive deep into one of them. You might be wondering what is a preprocessor? Wikipedia tells me that a preprocessor is a computer program that modifies data to conform with the input requirements of another program. To relate that to SAS, 
how it works is you're going to open up your code editor. You're going to write, you're going to write some SAS. It's going to run through a compiler. We're going to talk about all this stuff. Don't let this scare you away. And then it's going to spit out CSS. So it's a preprocessor. It gets processed through that compiler so that on the front end, on the, the, the browser, it's going to read CSS, but you wrote SAS. So it's kind of like you, it's like a translator, you know, it goes through a translation uh, kind of system. First step is you write SAS, it gets compiled, and then in the browser, they read CSS. So that's basically what it is. Why would you use SAS? Well, CSS, just plain cascading style sheets, can get really hairy and unorganized and very cluttered. There's no sort of organization, there's no standardization of how you're supposed to use it, and that's great, but that also means you could just have the worst CSS organization and it's just it can get can get real bad but sas is quite clean it's very very clean it's easy to organize and it's beautiful it's beautiful to write it's simple to write there are less there's less typing involved uh, and and there's so much that you can do with it also it can equate to smaller file sizes and that's really important because it can optimize your user experience for the for the the front end user and uh, it's better for load time for your websites what are some more benefits of SAS? Well, time-saving awesomeness, for one, it's very a very easy syntax to learn, and you're gonna wonder why you didn't even bother to learn this earlier. Uh, I know that there's some people out there, some developers and designers, um, even the SAS website almost encourages for you to use what's called SCSS, Sassy CSS. We'll talk about that shortly here, because it's easier to, they think they say it's easier to learn because you don't have to learn a new syntax. It's virtually identical to CSS. Well, why would you just want to do that? Why you got to learn something new, right? It has features like mix-ins, variables, extends, imports, and so on. Just imagine how powerful CSS would be if it were like a programming language like JavaScript or jQuery or PHP, where you get to do functions and variables and you get to use those globally across your program. That's what you get to do now in CSS. And you can simply nest your selectors for hierarchy. So no more curly braces or lengthy descendant selectors. You just have to nest your CSS using tabs. It's really super easy and it's awesome, which means you can 10x your workflow, SAS versus SCSS versus CSS, which is better. There are two flavors of SAS. One of them is SAS which is syntactically awesome style sheets. And the other one is Sassy CSS, also known as SCSS. SAS is a totally new syntax. I mean, it's very similar to CSS, but it's new. You have to learn a little bit of a new syntax. It has no curly braces or semicolons, which is great because you don't have to type those out. Those are repetitive or redundant keystrokes. And it uses indentation and nesting for hierarchy rather than having long descendant selectors to select something specific, you can just nest your selectors. SCSS is kind of like vanilla CSS on steroids. There's no new syntax to learn, so valid CSS is valid SCSS. You could just simply change the file extension to SCSS and then voila, there you go, you got sassy CSS. Uh, and it still has access to mix-ins and variables. So it's a great segue into learning SAS, but we're just gonna jump into SAS. And CSS is just the original styling language. Uh, it's required, you're required to type everything. You know, you gotta do your curly braces and your semicolons, and there are no variables, no mix-ins, and no time-saving plugins. It can get messy, and it's just, it's just CSS. It's great, eh, but it's also not the point of this course. Now, what about less CSS, the other CSS preprocessor? Well, less is very similar to sassy CSS. It has mix-ins, variables, and so on, but it also has a lot of syntactical differences. They're not better or worse. It's just kind of one camp or the other, you know, Nikon versus Canon sort of Mac PC sort of thing. It's up to you what you want to use, but if you're here, you're, you're here to learn SAS. The other thing is there, the libraries are different. And if you want to have a really in-depth comparison, you could just go to cssstricks.com slash SAS versus less. The, the URL is right there on the screen. You can click on it or you know type it in your browser. That's the URL. My favorite flavor, my favorite flav is uh, what we are going to use in this course and that's SAS. We're gonna use SAS because I want you to learn a new skill and it's way better than sassy CSS and CSS and less, it's, it's great. I love it and you're gonna love it too. So that's the idea with SAS. We're not gonna spend so much time on the theory of things. We're going to really just jump in and start doing SAS 
and then you'll really understand what it is as we go through. So hang tight and let's jump over into the next video, shall we?